Hello, 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 hello. Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm guessing everyone had coffee and tea so that we don't fall asleep in the session. Um, that said, you should not. This is probably one of the most useful sessions to find at Droidcon. I'm sure everyone has said that, but this is going to be a, a lot of stuff we talk about specifically to mobile advertising. Um, I do have a very uh, strong challenger in this same same time slot, which is features of ice cream sandwich. So I expect a medium-sized uh, turnout for this session. But uh, we go through it and then uh, you know have a quick Q and A at the end. Right. So uh, you made your app, right? And uh, you know you decided you want to use mobile advertising as a monetization tactic. Um, and then you get to sort of this stage. Um, the bald person was not the intention. The intention was to show confused person. Uh, where there's just so many options you have right now that, uh, you know, literally it's, it's a question of, okay, what do I use? How do I use? How do I monetize? There's just so many ad choices uh, out there. So what we do is we go through all of these and we go through sort of what the best practices have worked. Um, and then you'll see that you know, some of this might actually end up making sense. Uh, really quickly, background about me and why I am giving this talk or why I might know something about this. Uh, so I manage India operations for a company called Flurry. We are the largest mobile analytics company in the world. Uh, and we also have built an advertising network on top of that. Uh, personally, me, I'm a big app enthusiast. Um, I live and breathe apps 24-7. Um, and I recently moved from San Francisco about two months back uh, to set up in the operations for Flurry. So, about me. Um, so, the agenda for today, and hopefully you'll see some truth at the end of it. Um, so, what we do is we talk about uh, you know certain common metrics. I mean, a lot of this might be familiar to a lot of you guys, but I want to sort of cover the whole spectrum uh, from right from the start to the end. Um, so you'll see we cover the metrics, which is basically what common terms are used when you refer to mobile advertising. Then we go into what are the different types of providers available, or rather how, you know, who can you partner with, or how can you actually put ads inside your app. Uh, and then lastly, which is probably the most important thing which most people wonder, is that, you know, where do you place the ads inside your app so you can monetize most effectively. That's the integration options part. So we go through all of these, and you know, um, Hopefully, at the end of it, there'll be uh, some consensus as to you know what's working and what's not. Um, so, really quickly, the common metrics that you know we talk about in mobile advertising. So, uh, CPM comes from the online world. Uh, again, the most common metric that we discuss in mobile also, uh, cost per thousand impressions, which means uh, basically for every thousand impressions that you're showing inside your app, how much money you're making. Uh, CPC, cost per click, which basically means uh, for every single per, uh, ad that has been clicked inside your app, how much money do you make? Uh, CPI, cost per install, that's more sort of a newer uh, mobile uh, metric only, which is um, certain ad providers allow you to monetize if you can promote other apps and they'll pay you on a cost per install, which means you, the publisher gets paid when the user installs the other app. Um, CPA, which is again similar to the web cost per action, this actually involves the user taking some action. So what that means is that, uh, say it's the as an ad for you know um, Samsung, right? Uh, cost per click, you would click on the Samsung ad and you get paid, or the user would. In cost per action, what they require is the user clicks on the ad, fills a form, submits something, and that's when the developer gets paid. So that's sort of taking you know, the CPC one step further. So the payouts are pretty high, usually in CPA, uh, but the concern which, which most developers have, which I agree with, is it takes a lot for the user to, to, for the developer to get paid. I mean, for someone to click on an ad and then submit a form or take some sort of action is asking a lot, um, which is why you know, even though the payout per sort of action is pretty high, Do we do this? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so while we're getting this back, uh, even though the payout per action might be high, um, you know, it doesn't happen as often that you actually monetize successfully. Right? 
You want to just hold this? Okay. Uh, so, sorry. so moving forward, we'll go into the different kind of providers. Some technical issues. One second. What's an impression? Uh, sure, good question. Uh, an impression is basically every single time an ad gets shown. While they are hooking stuff up, any other questions at this point? What is ECPM? Good point, let's have a slide. Uh, so ECPM, so, I should not have missed that. So ECPM is basically the effective cost per thousand impressions. So now that we have so many different models, like CPC, CPI, CPA, CPM, how do you actually measure, compare one versus the other, right? Say for example, if I'm clicking on an ad and you know, the developer makes money versus I'm just showing an ad the developer makes money, how do you compare those two? So you back everything out into your eCPM, which is no matter how you get paid out, right? Measure your revenue or cost you're making per thousand impressions. So that's the eCPM. And basically, um, that is everything that you need to measure upon. So no matter what kind of integration you use, provider you use, metrics you use, everything needs to back out as to what your ECPM is at the end of the day. Make sense? So, you know, in my, in moving forward, you'll see now the slides that refer only to ECPMs, because that, as I said, no matter how you're getting paid out, is what you measure upon. All right, so we're going to go into the different kind of providers that are out there and how you could put ads inside your app. So the most common kinds that are out there are basically what we refer to as ad networks. So who's heard what an ad network is before? Okay, uh, no, man. So who's heard of InMobi? <laughs> More hands of who's InMobi than an ad network. InMobi is an ad network. Um, so. An ad network is basically a third party, right? And to explain in very simple terms, they are a broker. They are a broker of advertising. What they do is that they will buy the publisher inventory. So you're the publisher, they'll buy, say, 1,000 impressions from you and go and sell it to an advertiser and take a cut in the middle. So in very simple terms, it's almost like a stock broker where they have direct relationships with the advertisers and the publishers, publishers being you guys. So, you know, say, let's take an example of an app. Let's say Angry Birds. Angry Birds is using ads for a very long time inside the Android app, right? So Angry Birds, right? Uh, so in Mobi, for example, would go to Angry Birds and they would say, you know, become a publisher with us. So they were basically would be buying a lot of their impressions. And then subsequently, they would go to all the different advertisers that are on this right hand side. So there's Samsung, Coke, LG, or what, any brand. And you know, ask them, tell them that, hey, I have all these publishers who have all these impressions, why don't you, you know, pay me so I can show your ad in all these different apps. So very simple term, that's an ad network. Um, and if it works better for you guys, feel free to ask questions in the middle. Sorry. impressions of an app? For a publisher. What, what does impressions for, from a publisher mean? Right, so impressions mean the number of ads you show inside your app in the publisher. Yeah, but uh, if in Mobi purchases uh, impressions from uh, Angry Birds, what right. does it mean? It's Angry Birds is not mad. No, Angry Birds is showing ads, right, for example. So what it means is, yeah, Angry Birds is showing one million ads in a day. Okay. Right? In Mobi, by purchasing means they are paying Angry Birds a certain price. And that price is essentially what the uh, advertiser pays minus a cut of in movie. So let's say the advertiser pays 50 cents cost per click, for example, right? In movie will typically say take 40 percent, right? So that's 20 cents, and they pass the 30 cents on to Angry Birds for each click. We're gonna have these interruptions quite often, I think. Any other questions in the meantime? Next slide. What is the fill rate? Next slide. Uh, 
different features have been, I mean, social features have been integrated into advertising and marketing, right? So, uh, as an advertiser or a publisher? As an advertiser and publisher, maybe not as a publisher, but as an advertiser, I have to think about how to integrate those kind of features in the ad, uh, advertisement. So just putting an ad on an app is not really sufficient, right? Mm -hmm. So what else do I do to make sure that those kind of things get, uh, you know, integrated? So you're saying, I'd say, because I'm a Samsung, how do I best promote my brand? Right? That's, yeah. That's, that's a it. good question. Um, there's obviously, that's a completely different science. Uh, honestly, the topic of this discussion is publishing. So we can talk about it offline and, you know, we can talk about what the different strategies we use. Sorry, no more of this. Okay, while well, this is going on, so to answer the question, so basically this is, uh, so what you'll see is with each provider, the next slide will follow up with sort of what the advantages, disadvantages, and sort of best practices when using this specific provider. So when it comes to using an ad network, just using an ad network alone, so let's say using InMobi or AdMob just by themselves, the biggest advantage you get is that these people, these ad networks have direct relationships with the advertisers. Which means that they have teams that are also selling to Coke and Samsung. So if something is not working as a publisher for you, and you tell them, they have more control to go after the advertisers and you know change things around. Because they're not working with any other third parties. They have direct relationships with advertisers, direct relationships with you. And that works out you know, in the long run, especially um, you know, if you are a very big app. Um, so it helps having you do have a direct relationship with someone in these ad networks uh, because then they can do a lot for you in terms of optimizing, filling ads, and so on. Um, that sort of goes with ability to scale up advertisers. Also, if you're working directly with an ad network, um, and you know, there's a bunch of guys in Mobi over here and they tell you this, that they can provide a lot of you know custom solutions. So by custom, I mean, you know, we're gonna go over like what panel means, what indecision means, what video means. But a lot of the times, a lot of the ad networks, you know, the publishing teams will, depending upon your app, you know, provide you something that will be completely different, right? Like an interactive ad or, uh, you know, something like, a lot of times we have surely also, uh, you know, mix up different kinds of ads, like we show panel sometimes, and indecision sometimes, depending upon what the product is. So, again, having that direct relationship with the ad network always helps in the long run, um, because they can, you know, do a lot for you to try and, uh, um, secure your window. And then, you know, the, one, the last thing which sort of is a big advantage again using ad networks is that on the advertiser side, so when an advertiser is, you know, going through an ad network, um, usually most ad networks have better targeting and optimization. So, you know, going to that question I was asked about how advertisers are looking to market best, um, they have a lot of targeting based on, okay, target my, you know, brand to only a certain age or certain gender or certain location. Um, that helps the advertiser, but I'll tell you why it helps the publisher. That means that most likely, right, the ad that they are showing is contextually more relevant to your user base. So, which is why you know, a lot of the ad networks are very useful because they build a very good engine below the entire ad server. Um, disadvantages, uh, gentlemen over there ask, uh, if you use a single ad network by itself, um, you usually see that the fill rate, so fill rate is basically um, the number of, um, uh, so say for example, have a publisher, my available impressions I can show is 100,000, right? But if I'm using one ad network, uh, they are only being able to show 80,000 ads for that. So the fill rate is 80%. And the reason they can't show 20,000 more is because they don't have enough advertisers, right? That's what fill rate is. So typically, if you use a single ad network, especially globally across all markets, you'll see the fill rate is lower. Um, so that's why they always recommend using multiple networks at one time, which I'll go over in the next slide. And similarly, if the fill rate is lower, the ECPM also tends to be on the lower side. Uh, so it's always recommended to use multiple. And we talked about examples of InMobi, Atmob, Flurry, ourselves and our network. Um, I think on the first slide itself, when I made that picture, I counted there were like 34 different ad networks. So a uh, lot of competition. Okay, so I'll try and speed up now. So uh, the next thing is, next kind of providers, we talked about the ad network. The next kind is what we call the ad exchange or optimizer. So we discussed in the previous diagram, we saw that uh, the network is selling directly to advertisers. In this case, the network is now selling to ad, network, selling to ad networks. 
So what this does is, is not a publisher, right? You integrate ads, and this optimizer is now pulling ads from various ad networks rather than advertisers. So it'll pull an ad from InMovie, it'll pull an ad from AdMob, it'll pull an ad from Fury, JumpTap, and so on. What this ensures, and why this is helps, and you know there are so many out there, is fill rate is higher. So we talked about how fill rate is going to be lower, right? But now that you're using so many different ad networks who are selling to so many different advertisers more, uh, uh, up front, um, that the fill rate, now the amount of ads you show tend to be higher. Um, and the way they optimize it, so basically what they do is, theoretically what they do is, they, they look at ads from all these different providers, right? And they'll see which is the ad that's paying out the highest and show that one. That's typically what their optimization is. Um, advantages, higher fill rates, as we talked about, theoretically higher CPMs. And the reason I say that theoretically is um, that, as I said, they take the highest paying ad and show that at that point. Um, so theoretically, highest paying ad means highest CPM. However, because there's no not much qualitative optimization and targeting being done, uh, the click-through rates might be lesser. And if people are paying on click, that means your ECPM actually goes down. So, um, the disadvantage is, you know, in this case, the, the, the broker in the middle has relationship with other ad networks, not directly advertisers. So they are dependent on third-party ad networks for filling all the advertising. For example, if InMobi or AdMob, for example, uh, hypothetically, they go down one day, what does this ad network, what does this you know, person do in the middle? They're dependent on your you know, third parties for filling the ads, for serving the ads, all of that. Um, so no direct relationship with advertisers. I talked about optimization, it's not quantitative, purely on you know, who's paying the highest, not contextual. That means if someone could be, you know, uh, it could be the highest paying ad, uh, but you know, people might not click on it. Right? Um, and then one issue that is more sort of account management related, and you know, developers should know about this, is that since they are working with ad networks, they typically only pay the publisher once they get paid from the ad network. So which means say an ad network is paying after 30 days, they'll pay the middleman after 30 days, and then the, the optimizer will then pay the publisher after 30 more days. So there's sort of, you know, the cash flow can be an issue. However, this is something that I believe is being addressed by a lot of these optimization channels, and shouldn't be an issue in the long run. Examples are Mobflix, Smarto, you can check these guys out. Mobflix is probably the most popular one on Android. Um, so mediation layer is um, so mediation layer is very similar to an ad optimizer, ad exchanger, where they use multiple ad networks. Again, the same thing. Uh, there is a key difference though. There is no optimization happening. The mediation layer does not do any optimization. So all they do is typically what we call mediate. So what they do is say, for example. Um, as a publisher, I'll set my priorities. That first, I want to see iAd, or uh, Android, sorry. First, I want to see InMobi. Second, I want to see AdMob. Third, I want to see JumpTap. So they'll keep requesting ads for those. And say, for example, they request an ad for InMobi first. If InMobi ad is not available, then they'll go to AdMob. If that's not available, then they'll go to JumpTap. So they are purely mediating based on what ad is available. No optimization. They're not mediating based on payout at all purely based on what ad is available at a given point in time. Higher fill rates, of course, since you're using multiple people or providers. Um, what this does is, you know, these, even, even though you're using this layer in the middle, um, you still are directly interacting with the ad network because in this case, you're managing your own accounts in the ad network and there's no single optimizer taking care of you. All that this technology does is basically make sure that your uh, ads are flowing all the time. So you still have your direct relationship as a publisher with the ad network. Uh, you still have you know all the benefits that you would have a single ad network, uh, but in this case, there are multiple ad networks. Um, disadvantages. So how the advantages and disadvantage here is that if you're using an ad exchange with optimizer, since they pay you and since they manage the relationship with the ad networks, you just have to handle one account, one person. In this case, since you have to sort of work with all the other ad networks, if I'm using six, I have to manage every single account. And I have to keep an eye on every single account, when they're gonna pay me, um, what the impressions for that particular account are, and so on. So that can be a little bit of an overhead in just trying to manage all these people. Um, and okay, no optimization, but 
optimization, optimization at the end of the day is a word that's very easily thrown around. I mean, honestly, there's not much optimization happening anywhere right now. So, uh, you know, when when mediation layers, you know, they say that we don't optimize, we just fill it. And you have the flexibility of choosing who you want. So, example, uh, you know, AdWord, which actually is an AdMob company. AdMob is one of the biggest ad networks, or it was, which was until it got bought by Google. So, you have a question? Yeah, using a mediation layer kind of proxy in between, mm -hmm. uh, who decides which uh, network gets queried first? You, the publisher. The publisher decides, I want to place in movie first, add more second or whatever, and depending upon that, they send you. If the first one is not available, the second one comes instead. Can you can change from that to You can change from the fly with anyone. Doesn't even update your app. Um, moving on to sort of the ad server directs here. So this is probably the most um, awesome mobile advertising technique because here in this case, there is no third party. You keep all the revenue you generate. You directly sell to advertisers. Forget about ad networks, forget about mediation layers. So the server, you have an ad server, which either you build or you source, and you go out and sell your inventory directly to advertisers. Um, of course, advantages, highest revenue, no third party to share, pie with, you're doing all your advertising on your own. Um, you have complete control over what ads get shown, when they get shown. You have complete control over you know the quality of sort of the banner, the creative, when and how it is, all of that. Disadvantages, you have to have a sales team. So disadvantage, you have to have your own sales team or you have to you devote your own time running from agency to agency, advertiser to advertiser, selling your inventory. So this only makes sense if you're really, really big. This only makes sense for like say a review. Or you know, uh, people are familiar with sort of uh, the Indian app ecosystem news hunt. Right, so news is a pretty popular app and they do their own selling, which makes sense because they have so many impressions in India that for them to hire a sales team it works out much better. Um, and you know, if you're using an ad server that you build on your own, um, you know, at the end of the day, ad networks and ad optimizers exist for a reason. And the reason is because you know, they have the experience of building ad products. They have the experience of basically you know, building targeting optimization. By you know selling on your own, if you're building your own ad server, right, um, you you might not be able to achieve those optimization and targeting features that they have, and then subsequently the click throughs might decline. So, question like that. Can you give us some idea about what is the number at which it makes sense? Like how many? Good question. Good question. Uh, this question was what is uh, what is the number at which it makes sense uh, to start selling? Um, I would think you need to be have you need to have at least about uh, one to two million impressions a day um, to think about using this uh, because and it's, and secondly uh, depending upon the market in which you're selling uh, so if you're selling in India um, you have to figure out what the cost of a salesperson is versus what advertisers are paying if you're selling in the US is different so at least one million impressions is, is the minimum threshold where you can start thinking. One million impressions a day. So that means one million ads of, you know, of being shown inside your app every single day. That's about right. Um, an example is usually, as I said, publishers, uh, publishers tend to build it on their own, which means a lot of application developers build it on their own. However, seeing sort of this gap in the market, there are some new solutions coming out. So the company called Mopub, who's doing it, and Flurry ourselves gave to come out with a solution where you can you know, use our ad serving technology to power your ads. Alright, moving to the cool stuff, and hopefully we'll get through. Sorry? For publishers, there to be an ad network. I can't, where is it? Can you raise hand? Yeah, sorry. For that thing, this thing in the last slide, which you discussed, for a publisher, that would be using Curry as an ad network. No, so you'll be using Curry's ad serving technology, but still selling on your own. Uh, and Flurry and say Mopa are on this kind of solution will charge you on a technology basis. It's an enterprise sale, basically. So you sell directly to the advertiser, right? But then how do you end up showing the ads on your app? So you have to build some serving, right? So we take over that part. Or Mopa, for example, takes over that part. Uh, so integration options. Um, so you know, a lot of times you hear okay, banner, takeover, video advertising. There are six different ones, and I'm running a little late, but I'll try and speed this up. Um, the most common one is banner advertising. 
right? So band advertising means the Kia Motors ad over there is a banner ad, right? Uh, it's probably the most common thing that we see, that we hear of. Um, ECPM ranges from as low as 20 cents. Actually, it's even lower sometimes. I've just kept it 20 cents so you guys don't feel disappointed. Uh, and as high as some, as 80 cents and in certain cases a dollar or north of a dollar, but the range of ECPM for banner advertising is about 20 cents to 80 cents. Um, advantages um, is that in any given app, at any given point, the highest number of available ads that you have is the banner advertising. Because you can just basically put something at the bottom of the screen and you keep rolling all the time. So, you know, uh, to achieve one minute impression using banner ads versus we talk about some other things like video and some other stuff is much easier because, you know, it'll keep going all the time and it's just there at the bottom of the screen. Um, users or people who are using your app uh, are used to this kind of advertising from online, right? Online they're used to seeing banner ads on websites. So what we see is that the resistance to these kind of ads is lesser from a user perspective. Like they don't mind seeing these ads. Obviously all users hate ads. Uh, but this is probably one that because they're more used to, they're like, okay, fine, let's, it's okay, I'll still use the app. Uh, disadvantages, ECPM is the lowest um, because it's, the ad is always there, it's a small ad, people click on it less. Um, you know, at the end of the day, because being a small ad, people don't see it sometimes, especially if it's you know, not blended well within the app itself. Uh, so typically ECPMs will be the lowest across all different forms of mobile uh, sort of advertising. Um, and from my perspective, you know, one thing that a lot of people don't think about is that it's taking away some valuable screen space, right? Where you could, you know, do so much, you could do a little more with your product itself, right? It's taking away, so for example, typically a banner ad is I think 360 by 100, uh, around that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but, uh, um, you know, that, that is valuable space that I could use for my product to do something else. I mean, think about mobile screen at the end of the day is a small screen. And whatever app you're building, right, uh, you want to utilize every single part of the screen to the to the most that you can. So, from that's something that most people don't think about. But I always wonder, and you know, even when I work with developers, I advise them that you know, banner ads take away some screen space. So be careful in how you use them. Um, the best practices: um, do not show them during any kind of interaction. That is the number one mistake that Angry Birds Android. It was so annoying to use that thing because when you're shooting your bird, there's an ad on top of the corner. And I mean, that was just like, the, the ad keeps switching, so my constitution gets disturbed and I can't pass the level. Right? And that means a lot to me by the way, passing angry words on this. So, um, you know, do not, I would, you know, don't show it during like the game is being played or, you know, facilitate it unless it's a lifestyle app. If, for example, uh, you know, you're watching a video or you're checking out a video or, you know, on Facebook, for example, if you imagine if you were scrolling through pictures and there was an ad on top, right, it would be so annoying. So don't show it during when the user is actually engaged with your thought or whatever it is. Uh, bottom of the screen usually works best. I don't know why. I've not answered that, but usually it does. Again, I think people are just used to it over a period of time now. Um, refresh rate means, you know, if a person is stuck on the same screen, how often should your, this banner ad actually keep changing? Um, usually we see that every 30 to 60 seconds, you should change the ad. And depending upon, as I said, what provider you're using, like an ad network, ad optimizer, they provide these options. Where you, know, you can keep switching your ads every 30 to 60 seconds. And that's, usually we see the optimal rate because people you know, uh, uh, see a new ad after a certain amount of time, and along with that, it gives enough time for them to see this particular ad. If they are going to click on it, they would have to turn it by now. Yeah. Suppose they are only CPM models. Right. So, what's stopping from changing your ad if you want to say, I will get more interest in your CPM model? Yeah, but every month, uh, that's true, but then you don't know how, you don't know if you have a CPM model, right? Unless you start directly. When you're using an ad network, they're not going to tell you the payment CPM, CPC, they'll tell you what your effective CPM is. No, so you keep it 30 seconds, I'm not saying, depending upon however it's being paid, what we've seen is optimal is 30 seconds. And I network will never tell you that this ad is CPC, this ad is CPM. Okay. And if you're selling directly also, you go to your advertiser and tell them, Ki main aapka ad, every one second I'll refresh it, they'll be like, no boss, I don't want to advertise with you. Right? They'll be like, keep it for at least you know, a minute, they'll say a minute, but you'll come average for 30 to 60 seconds. So, like your computer ad networks, you don't uh, specify the model beforehand, like pure CPM or pure CPC. The ad network won't tell you no. if you're using an ad network. They'll tell you it's a mix. 
If you ask for the breakdown, also they'll give you some breakdown numbers, but those won't make sense. And uh, if you're directly selling, the advertisers are going to pay on whatever basis, and they'll say, they'll check it out, and if they see your oh, ads refreshing one second, it'll be like, what's going on? Yeah. Does any of these uh, agencies, I mean the ad networks or the uh, intermediaries, do any sort of qualitative analysis on the ads? Uh, ad networks. They do? So ad networks. So ad networks, what they do is, that's, that's one of the advantages that I put out, right? What ad networks do is, you know, they actually have some qualitative analysis where they try and do some user analysis, right? For, they have a lot of data in some places, and if the ad network is really big, they've been serving ads to the same device for a very long time. So say for example, let's take InMobi for example, right? So InMobi, if you are a publisher and you release your app, and your app is used by 100,000 people, the chances that InMobi has served ads to 100,000 people before is pretty high through other apps, right? So they have an idea of what, what people click on maximum. So based on that, they can optimize. Can they do any recommendations to the sellers? Recommendations to the advertisers? Yeah, to the advertisers. <coughs> like recommendations like how you should build a creative or the ad? Right. So yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. So ad networks themselves work a lot on that. Okay. That was one of the advantages I pointed out, right? That using an ad network in Mobi Story, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of advantages on the qualitative side, where they do a lot of analysis because that's their strength, right? Selling because they are getting the brand dollars or from advertisers, so they want to try and get them the best buck for the job. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Let's let finish. Uh, so next one was interstitial advertising, which is uh, uh, basically a full screen ad. So you know, uh, you'll see that when you're playing the app, you'll see a full screen ad. Um, ECPMs are higher, obviously. You see an ad on your full screen. That means uh, people are going to pay higher for a click. If you had, there are more chances that people will click on it. So it starts at 50 cents, I mean, very low range, but commonly you will get about a dollar ECPM if you are showing full screen ads. Um, when someone talk about quality, so usually full screen ads are very good quality because you know it's, a, it's showing on a full screen. So usually people work, whether it's ad networks or advertisers or you, you'll probably work quite a bit on making sure the ad actually looks good. Um, and does not take away during the experience. Unlike I know, right? Uh, this is not during when you're playing the app. This is actually more. I'm going to buy. It's more intrusive, but at least doesn't take away space during your interaction. Disadvantages, obviously, it's annoying, right? I mean, uh, when, as a user, if I'm going through my app and suddenly I see a full screen ad, it's more annoying than a banner ad, let's put that um, That's why there's a lot of science behind when you should do this. Um, so what I have seen work best is do it during transition screens. So by transition screens, say for example, a user finishes a level of a game, and before going to the next level, show this ad, because that's like a break for them also. They are taking a break, moving on to the next level. So they have, you know, more of an attention over there to see an ad. And they won't get annoyed because they're like, okay, anyways, I'm going to take a break and move on to the next thing. Um, second one is, uh, so another example of that is, so I'm guessing most people are familiar with Words with Friends, right? Uh, Words with Friends is one of the most popular mobile games um, in the world right now. So what they do is, they show an ad once you submit your word, right? So you're playing with someone else, you submit your word, and after that, you have to wait forever for the other person to play the word. So in between that, they'll show you an interstitial ad. And that has been very successful in a while. Um, one other thing, do not launch these kind of advertising when you're just launching the ad. Because it's then users will like, oh, there's so many ads already. I don't want to see so many ads. Once your user base is established, once you have a certain number of users in market share, then you know, start integrating these kind of options. Um, choose ad partner extra carefully. Um, very important because you're, uh, it's a full screen ad. That means you want to make sure your network optimizer, whoever you're working with, is reliable and dependent. Uh, and they can show good quality ads because this it actually adds to your product experience also. Right? It's showing in the middle of a screen. That means you know if the quality is bad, then people will think your app is bad. If the quality is good, then it gives some more credibility. Um, and this is something that my friends at VSOFT will disagree with. but. Uh, um, I don't like to show ads right upon app launch uh, because that's putting something right out there, right in the face of the user even before he's got into my experience. Um, that works for some people, it's up to you, but that's more of a personal opinion where I don't like when as soon as the user launches, you have to show an ad to them. And intrusive, disruptive, go to another level, wait for them to actually get involved with the app and then you know, show an ad after that. 
speed up video. Um, video advertising, um, similar interstitial, um, but instead of full screen static cat, you'll see a full screen video will start playing. Um, ECTMs, again, much, much higher on this end. $6, $10 for each video ad you tend to show. Um, this adds even more to your credibility of your app because the quality of the ad is so good. If you should video ads, right? People think of like Vision TV. Uh, TV type ad is being shown, that means just must be a very good app. You know? uh, so further adds to the credibility. Uh, there's not any way app experience moving on. The most experience, uh, most disruptive user experience. The most annoying user experience, I have heard people saying that uh, it's annoying to a level where I feel like deleting the app sometimes, um, which is why you know the best practices are even more important over here. So one of the things that a lot of people do, publishers do, is they cap the number of video ads shown per user per day or week. We can do video advertising, but don't show more than two video ads, three video ads per week to a user. Right? That way you're still monetizing that and you're still getting high CPMs. And you're making sure that users are not getting you know, too many ads and you're not getting annoyed too much. So that's one thing that's worked quite well, quite well for a lot of people. Uh, transition screens again work best. And um, the last point is a lot of times some people, the way they integrate video ads is that they put an ad video ad and um, you know you have to click play on it to start playing. And the users are confused, okay, what, when I reach a blank scheme, what do I do? So auto start, which is you know, say they clicked on next level. The ad should start playing immediately. That's usually works best. So people just see the ad and get out of it. Um, offer based advertising. So anyone who's heard of incentivized installs or rewarded installs, um, this is probably the highest or best form of monetization where you essentially give an offer to the user to click on an ad or do something with an ad, and in return, you give them something which will benefit them in the ad. Typically, this is a games model where, uh, for example, Farmville, if a Farmville was built on Android, they would be like, uh, download this app and get 10 crops free, or something like that. Um, so that's something that works best. Um, highest CCPM, as you can see, 15 dollars because people love getting offers and downloading stuff to get free stuff. Um, I can't see any particular disadvantage with this. It actually adds to your product again because it's another form of monetization plus users actually really like it. They want to get these ads. They want to click on these ads because that means they're going to get more points to it. Um, sorry? Yeah, and the advertiser competition is separate. <laughs> this is not necessarily the most beneficial of the advertiser. I agree with you. Uh, but we are talking about how to make the most fun money. Uh, so, app download is a win-win, but see, in an app download also, the quality of users is questionable, right? Because they are clicking on downloading the app to get their points. Whether they actually go back to your app again, who knows? Right? So, advertiser, I don't know, we have a conversation about that. <laughs> and uh, uh, best practices I talked about typically gaming model, uh, but a lot of non-gaming apps have also been successful doing it. Offer anything in your app. The best example I saw was one guy offered, click on this ad to remove ads. <laughs> and now not only click on this ad to remove ads for one week. That means every week after we got an ad. Right? I was creative, uh, very, very, I would say, very genius to be able to do this, and he made all money. So, you know, uh, that's offer anything. I mean, ads, remove ads, or I don't know, anything that you have in the app to offer. So don't know anything as a gaming model. Uh, another thing, cap the number of offers per user per day because, you know, you have the risk of just giving too many offers away, and uh, that might actually end up just overloading the user. So I would recommend capping the user number of offers. Um, some people do very complicated offers that like, uh, download this app and get to the third level and play it for five minutes. That's like you're asking the user to uh, go to uh, do like 10 minutes to play and come back to the app. Keep it simple. Download an app, watch a video, click on an app, you know, those are simple offers that users understand properly. How much? I have to wind up or what? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Do you want to progress with one minute? Okay. Uh, push ads are basically, uh, uh, you, there's a couple of ads that doing this where you integrate and you essentially, uh, uh, Put, do push notifications to display ads to users, so it will actually not be inside your app, it will go inside the notification tray. Uh, good ECPMs, very disruptive, however, because 
you know, not only am I seeing ads inside your app now, you have to show me ads outside my app also in my notification tray. Um, highest risk of user leaving the app. Again, um, if you want to do it, which I would recommend doing it, uh, do it only once every week or once every time period. Don't do it every time because the user gets annoyed. Um, and one of the strategies, make it opt-in where in your app you can basically provide uh, uh, an opt-in solution where you can be like, all right, I want to receive push notifications. And if they do that for ads, then that means your conversion will be higher. Um, Feature-based advertising is basically um, advertising that where you integrate uh, ads as a feature. So commonly this would be like a more ads button. So you'll have like a screen and you'll say more ads, you click on more ads and then you know uh, a user can go and download that. High CPMs, ads to your product. Um, one risk is that typically the screens are promoting other apps uh, very a lot. So the risk of losing your users going to some other app. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, this is uh, uh, providers. Uh, I would recommend don't use only one, use multiple, uh, whether it's ad exchange or mediation. Personally, I have to mediation because I'm the kind of guy who likes to manage how ads are being shown on my own. Uh, but ad exchange is also work well, um, and that ensures your fill rate dies. Um, and if you're big enough, no doubt, sell directly. Um, you know, someone asked the question of when you start doing that, it's up, up to you to uh, judge, but selling directly means you're not sharing the pie with anybody else. Um, and what integration do you use? Do everything. I'll, you know, we are done, I know you're running out of time, but I'll show you, you know, after this we can talk about some ads, which basically implemented every single one of those features I told you in a very quick way. They did banner ads, takeover ads, video ads, push ads, feature-based ads, and offers. Monetizing every single thing. And as long as you follow some of those best practices that maybe I talk or you know, are available that developers talk about, you will be able to monetize and retain users. And I think this picture explains it really well. I didn't make it up, I just found it somewhere. Monetization, just like user acquisition on the other side, is a science. You have to measure every single day what's really working for you and what's not working for you, and then build on top of that. And I think that should be it. Sorry to bring over. Uh, any questions, then I'll be available. Thanks.